Folks of the weather, what is going on? If you live in this area of the United States, the central Midwest and southern U.S., you're going to want to pay attention uh, to uh, the 13th through 16th of January as a potential major ice storm. And I don't say that often. I mean, these are very rare, but a potential major ice storm is headed uh, towards the central southern and potentially midwestern United States. So I'm going to talk about that ice storm, how much people could get. I'm also going to show you how I forecast these ice storms. So you'll be able to literally take what I do and forecast your own after this as well. And I'm also going to give you a free resources guide in the video as well. So stay tuned for that. So that's what's coming up in this episode of State of the Weather Address. Welcome to the other side of the intro here. This video is going to be for weather enthusiasts and, and people that live in the central U.S. This isn't for uh, people looking for like dumbed down stuff you'd see on the news or, you know, overly complicated stuff. We're going to make this uh, fun and simple. This is disclaimer. This is not a forecast. This is raw meteorological data. Okay, we're just going to look at the models and I'm going to show you what they show. Okay, and I'm going to show you what could possibly happen, okay? So these are tools in your toolbox, essentially, here. This is uh, gonna happen around the 13th through 16th of uh, January. And these uh, these are computer models. This is the GFS we're looking at first here. Actually, this is the Canadian, sorry. This is the Canadian we're looking at. And these all can be found at Pivotal Weather, so you can actually go there yourself, even after this video and look at them. So we got a low pressure system. This is the jet stream. Here's your, uh, your polar uh, jet and this is the subtropical jet right here when you get a subtropical jet like this to swing uh, <clears throat> into the United States uh, that really uh, you could be dealing with an ice storm and so watch what happens as we go towards the 14th and the uh, 15th this thing begins to cut off and uh, this is kind of when the, the ice storm is peaking out in the plains and Midwest uh, your, your little uh, systems out here and you're getting uh, nice uh, south winds, nice little ridging here. And there's cold air up here. And what's happening is that warm air is going over that cold air. What's going on here is you've got a, we'll pretend this is a stationary front. Okay, so it's both a cold front and a warm front. It's just kind of stalled out here. Whoops. And what's going on here is you've got warm air out ahead of this thing moving over what is cold air over here. Okay, it, it kind of looks like that. And uh, so the further back you go, the deeper and farther up the cold air is, okay? And so what's happening is the uh, precipitation, is it lifts up. This is warm air above this triangle here I just drew. So it's actually rain up here. Now as it gets below this cold air, we'll say this is 32 degrees, this little blue line here, it freezes. So it's rain, and then by the time it gets near the surface, it freezes. So that's how you get freezing rain. So we're looking at the Canadian model right now, and the Canadian model actually paints out a catastrophic scenario. I'm not sure if this is going to happen, but it's been consistent, uh, the Canadian model and the European computer model, with uh, showing a pretty crazy winter storm set up here for ice. Okay, so watch what happens here. Okay, this, uh, this is around the 13th, 14th. You got this shallow kind of cold air. It's kind of moving south, but not really. You got this warm air feeding north, okay? Feeding north into uh, the southern, you know, central plains here. Okay, and your jet is out here, your subtropical jet, kind of where it's closed off. Now, this uh, front is actually stationary, like we said, okay? It's probably a little warm plunge here. There's probably a cold plunge back out there, and maybe a cold plunge back out there. It's actually a little bit further south, maybe down here-ish. But, so you got a really stationary front, and precipitation is just going to run along this uh, for several hours. Now watch what happens. It just cakes that area in ice, and then it even redevelops. Okay, you get another surge of uh, moisture that moves north. And this is the 15th. Okay, this has been going on over two days. This continues to move north, and actually affects places like Chicago as well. But what happens uh, towards the 16th, Okay, this is three days into it, believe it or not. That cold air begins to kind of retreat north 
Okay, this 540 line right here is where uh, temperatures are, you know, on average in the atmosphere near or above freezing uh, or below freezing. Okay, so, you know, there could be little cold pockets in the atmosphere, but overall this thing turns to rain after that. So, you know, that's kind of interesting. And so we'll go towards the 17th and 18th and the system slowly works its way to the east. So either way, there's going to be a lot of precipitation with this thing. But uh, the, the you know, sleet and particularly freezing rain potential looks uh, pretty nasty uh, from, you know, maybe Michigan down to uh, Texas, okay? And that includes Chicago even. So what's going on here is this warm air coming out of the Gulf is overriding that cold air, okay? It's getting lifted above it. And you'll notice that 540 line. This line indicates the average kind of temperature in the atmosphere being 32 degrees, okay? That's 540 line. North of here, it's going to be below 32 degrees. Now, why is it freezing here, okay? If that's 32 degrees, why the heck is it freezing here? Well, because that's the average temperature. Um, most of the atmosphere is actually above freezing in the circled area. The area that's below freezing is very near the surface, you know, 3,000 feet or less. Okay, and that's why it's actually raining there, but then it freezes when it hits the ground. So that's what's going on there. And I can show you this because the maximum temperature in the atmosphere, you know, going all the way up, you know, to the jet stream or whatever, is uh, in this area of freezing rain is above zero. Okay, this blue is actually below zero. So here it's all above zero. It's even 10, 15 degrees, you know, Celsius. <laughs> so it's pretty warm. Well, in the in the in the freezing rain area, it's more like five to ten, but it's pretty warm there, and so that looks like a classic freezing rain setup here uh, unfolding. And this is a 850 millibar temperatures. This is 5,000 feet off the surface. Okay, at surface it's freezing. 5,000 feet off. Look what the temperature is in this area. It's 10 degrees or so Celsius, and we can look at the surface temperature. Uh, we'll go down to surface and precipitation, and I'm going to click on the surface temperature as this loads here. And at 120, we'll see what that is. We'll go all the way to the same exact time, and you can see how crazy this is. Look at the temperature at the surface. It is well below zero. Here's, uh, or excuse me, 32 degrees. Here's 32 degrees. This is Fahrenheit now. It's, you know, in the 20s and 30s. So this is a classic freezing rain setup. All right, drum roll please. The moment we've been waiting for. How much does the uh, Canadian put out? I mean, this is just ridiculous. You got, it's forecasting two to four inches in this area. And you know what's scary about it is it's actually been consistent with that maximum, you know, three to four inch area. And so has the uh, European commuter model. The GFS has flip-flopped between the idea as well. So. Either way, there's going to be a lot of moisture and a lot of rain with this. The question is, is it going to be freezing rain? Sometimes you can get too much warm air that moves north, too much in the mid-levels, and it can turn it to rain and kind of screw with the system. So I'd be careful uh, looking at amounts this far out. But anything above about an inch and a half is pretty bad, okay? Two inches is what, what I would consider major. We're doubling that right there. Okay, that's that's literally catastrophic. I mean, think about that. Heck, four inches of snow can be a problem, okay, the farther south you go. Imagine four inches of ice or three inches. Okay, this is pretty crazy. But, again, it's a little bit far out. I mean, last night it was actually out here in Arkansas. Okay, so the location is going to change quite a bit. But, nonetheless, the general, you know, uh, the general gist has been, hey, there's going to be an ice storm in the south central U.S., this has been very consistent now by multiple models. And this, in general, extends out, you know, as far as Chicago. And we'll click on uh, the Chicago area here, uh, or the Midwest. This goes out into Missouri, maybe even as far north as Michigan. Not sure if that's going to happen or not. But even if it shows it out there, you can get maybe, you know, a quarter inch to half inch of ice. Again, this is probably going to change quite a bit. So this is not a forecast. This is a disclaimer. It's just showing the indication of a possible ice storm. That's about the best we can do this far out. So I'm not, now I'm taking a look at the GFS. I'm going to take a look at this. Here's the GFS as we get towards the 14th of, uh, of January. And 
It's showing a similar scenario, a little bit further north, a little bit less aggressive with the cold air. The packing isn't quite as strong. You can see these lines are a little bit spread out a little bit more. You'd like them to be a little bit closer together and this thing just to kind of stay there and not move much. But nonetheless, freezing rain for generally the same area, a little bit further north actually, shows KC getting a little bit more places just south of there. And it also is like the gym, it kind of redevelops down there in Oklahoma and moves uh, northeastward, okay? And this actually shows a little bit of snow for Wisconsin and uh, uh, Michigan maybe, far parts of Michigan as we have a warm front over here and a cold front, it actually kind of develops into a cyclone, okay? We originally had a stationary front and then it kind of starts to wrap a little bit and you can, with that you can pull some cold air down and get some snow. So we'll have to watch that. The Canadian model actually was showing a snowstorm for Nebraska and Iowa last night. So this has been kind of flip-flopping with the snow idea. So that's there's still a lot of uncertainty with that. But the ice storm has been fairly consistent. Right here is uh, the sounding we're going to look at here in a second. This is a vertical profile of the atmosphere. Okay, so this is farther up. This is closer to the surface. And these uh, the red line is essentially the temperature line. Okay. Um, so the farther to the right it is, it's actually warmer. The farther it is to the left, it's colder. You can see it's warm just above the surface, right at the bottom here, surface. Then it gets really cold at the surface. So it's warm above, so it's going to be raining up here. Then it's going to be um, freezing as it gets uh, to the surface because it's below freezing, the zero degree line right there. And so I'm going to show you uh, what that looks like on our actual storm here. Now let's click on uh, this area in Oklahoma right now, and I'll show you that sounding, okay, that ice storm. Uh, sounding that we like to see. There's that cold air right there, or warm air right there. So it's actually raining in this area right here. This is uh, 32 degrees right here, okay? Anything above that, you know, okay, anything above that to the right, it's going to be fr uh, above freezing. So you're getting rain over here, and then it's going to fall, and now it's below freezing in this area near the surface, okay? And so it's going to refreeze on the surface. That's a, a decent freezing rain sounding. And this 850 millibar, remember we looked at that, it was above freezing. That's about 5,000 feet up in the atmosphere. This uh, sounding where it's above freezing starts at about, oh, maybe 2,500, 3,000 feet. So below about 2,500, 3,000 feet, it's actually below freezing. And so that's about enough. I mean, that's you need, only need about 2,000, maybe 1,500 uh, feet for freezing rain to really be effective here and so uh, without it turning into sleet or something like that okay so that's that's kind of what's going on here and the GFS is showing the same kind of scenario in the same general location it's showing a little bit less and I'll show you the totals here and so the GFS is actually painting out you know a good uh, half inch or so in general with maybe an inch or so in this area you know, last night this actually showed several more inches out in this area. It was more like two to four, I believe. But it's also moved around a lot. There's still a lot of uncertainty, but nonetheless, it's still signaling pretty strongly that there's going to be an ice storm here, okay? And uh, the Midwest, it actually gives more. It gives Chicago, Michigan, you know, maybe even Ohio and Indiana a quarter inch to a half inch or so. So, you know, it's definitely something to watch here, but... I'd say the most most confident area is going to be somewhere between Oklahoma and Texas right now into Missouri and Kansas. You know, the past couple of days it's been showing that. Multiple models have been showing that as well. So how accurate are these models? This is some kind of cool tool that I use. It's called Spaghetti Charts, and this is the GFS, okay? And this is what I call my model sanity test. How sane is this model? All of these lines represent possible different outcomes that the model is forecasting, okay? If you change up the initial conditions a little bit. This is the jet stream right now. As you can see, there's a lot of confidence, okay? When they're closer together like that, it's very confident. When they're farther apart, it's less confident. So we're gonna go into the future when we have that uh, storm, and we're gonna go out to hour 120, okay? And uh, that is right over here, and as you can see that cut off low right here in the uh, desert southwest. You've got lines that are out here, so it could be over here, it could be over here, it could be smaller, it could be larger, it could disappear, you never know. But in general, there's some pretty good confidence that there's going to be a cut off low there that will supply 
you know, the potential for precipitation out ahead of an ice storm, uh, and at least rain and precipitation. But we'll go into the future here and watch what happens after about 138. This is 138 and 140. What happens is it's really starting to kind of get jumbled out here. So we can say around 138, 144, there's a lot of uh, uncertainty. Okay, so past that hour, I would take things for a grain of salt. But before that, I think we could, uh, you know, I think there's enough confidence that we could say, hey, let's pay attention to this. And part of that ice storm is in that range. About half of that ice storm is within that range. So in general, it looks pretty confident that we're going to see some type of ice storm in the uh, central United States or south central United States. So with that being said, there could be a pretty decent ice storm for the central and south central United States. So get ready for that. Now there's a special mission assignment for this video. And here's what it is. There might be a prize. Guess the amount of freezing rain for Wichita, Kansas between January 13th and January 16th. So I'm going to pull January 13th, 14th, 15th, and 16th. I'm going to pull the data from those four days from the Dwight Eisenhower Airport in Wichita, Kansas. So forecast for that location. And all you got to do is comment below this video, your guess, okay? And if we get 50 or more comments, we need at least 50 or more comments, I will give away a free storm chasing t-shirt of your choice. So you'll be, be able to select whatever chasing t-shirt you want. And I, I will give this t-shirt away to the winner. Okay, whoever's closest to the actual amount. Now, if there's a tie between multiple people, I'm just going to select one person at random out of that tie. Okay, and you can only guess once. Okay, and ask only one guess per person. Okay, so that being said, go ahead and make your guess in the comments section. And also, if you want more of these forecasting breakdowns and forecasting tutorials, go ahead and subscribe. I'll release these on a weekly, maybe bi-weekly basis. And if you want access to my super winter forecasting playbook, okay, it's like a cheat sheet guide for winter forecasting, essentially your playbook, go ahead and click the link in the description. Just click the download link, I'll send it off to you, and I'll send you some more forecasting, exclusive forecasting tutorials as well. So if, you, if you're interested in that, go ahead and click the link in the description. And uh, go ahead and share this video with your friends. Let them uh, know that the ice storm is coming. Give them the heads up and tell them to join the contest. And uh, with that being said, hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you soon.